It's five after now. Um, so we can start our lecture. Yawash, yawash. Uh, so um, those of you who don't know us, me, uh, I'm Elif Denal, the director of Ankara Eretz. Um, I know that there are lots of people from all over joining in on this lecture. Um, it will be my great pleasure to introduce Nilufar Boturolu Yone to everybody. But before then, I would like to make an announcement. Uh, we will have an open house event on Monday the 26th. We sent out uh, invitations and announcements. If you haven't received one, please get in touch with us and uh, we'll get you connected. Um, this will be a first for us uh, to have an open house online. Uh, normally we have a big happy party with lots of food and drinks and um, great company. Um, this time it'll be a little more um, information oriented. Uh, we, it will take about an hour and we will give you uh, some background on Eret uh, and the friends of Eret, what we do in Ankara in Istanbul and in the US and hopefully our um, uh, Executive Director Nancy Leinwand and our uh, President Brian Rose will join us as well uh, for a few words. So, and after that, um, or during that event, we will let you know more about the lectures uh, coming up. Um, I know this is a difficult period for everybody and uh, we're also experiencing new things and moving in in new directions. Um, so we're also open to um, suggestions. If you have any suggestions on what we can do um, and um, questions, whatever, please uh, contact me or Zeynep Simavi in Istanbul, Eret. So, um, and also for this lecture, if you have any questions, um, please have questions. It's always um, entertaining and interesting to have a discussion at the end of the talk, which will take about 40, 45 minutes or so. Um, please um, let us know in the chat section or at the end, you can raise your hand or um, connect uh, through audio and um, we'll have an informal discussion. And um, I can see that Nilifar, who's also joining us in Ankara Eretz is being kind of um, harassed by Kubaba, our, uh, our cat. So I will go rescue Nilufar in a few minutes so she can give us her lecture. So um, it's, as I said, great pleasure. It's an honor for me to introduce uh, Nilufar Baturolu Yone, whom I've known a long time, for a long time. Uh, she has a bachelor's of architecture degree from Middle East Technical University and a Master of Science also from Middle East Technical University and a PhD from Istanbul Technical University. Uh, she's conducted postdoctoral research at the University, University of Quebec at Montreal in Canada on conservation of modern heritage. Uh, she taught at Istanbul Technical University graduate program in art architecture preservation, which is uh, one of her main uh, specialties uh, between 1998 and 2013. And then she moved on to Abdullah Gül University School of Architecture uh, from 2013 to 2020. And since very recently, she started a new post at Mustafa Kemal University at Antakya, uh, Antioch, uh, Faculty of Architecture uh, as a professor. So she's a pre fresh professor as well. So we congratulate her on that. Um, she's worked on the Abdullah Gül Sumer campus restoration project with her colleague, Burak Asil Iskandar, on which she will present to us tonight. Um, and I also had the great pleasure to visit them uh, a few years ago and get a first-hand tour uh, of the facilities and the, uh, the whole project, which was, it was kind of before and during, I guess, the, um, the, uh, uh, the project and the building of the new campus. So hopefully when this pandemic is over, maybe we can take a trip to Kayseri and visit the facilities um, and see things in person as well. Uh, she's a, um, 
uh, as I said, pr uh, a specialist of conservation history and theory. Uh, she focuses on and publishes in this topic. Um, she's worked on Karkinesta. Um, a lot of you are familiar with the Karkinesta project in the uh, uh, Cappadocia Gate project. Um, she's done architectural and archaeological surveys, um, work on, worked on documentation methods, um, preservation history. Um, she also focuses on uh, modern buildings, um, modern building materials and techno technologies, uh, as well as um, modern and industrial heritage conservation and presentation, uh, preservation. Um, she also focuses on um, modern housing um, estates and protection of that. Uh, and, and as far as I know, she's also um, involved in the uh, protection of the Saracholo uh, um, project or the Saracholo neighborhood in Ankara. So there's a lot of um, dynamic projects she's um, involved in. She's a member of ICOMOS, the International Committee for the Conservation of Industrial Heritage, and um, DOCOMOMO, which is um, uh, the documentation of, and of um, conservations of buildings, sites, neighborhoods, of the modern uh, movement. So um, I'll stop here and let her uh, tell us all about the transformation of Sumer Bank Kayseri Textile Factory into the Abdullah Gül University Sumer campus. So thank you for coming and I will make myself quiet now. Okay, thank you very much, Elif. Um, the sound is echoing a bit because in, we're in the same <laughs> apartment. Thank you very much for the uh, introduction. I will uh, present the work uh, we have carried out with my colleague, Burak Asilis Kandar. Abdullah Gül University's uh, Sumer campus, which is the famous, uh, which was a former Kayseri Sumer Bank style, 2014 and well up to today basically, because at the end you will see that we have also some unfinished projects. Um, okay. So just to give a background uh, to start with, uh, Sumerbank uh, complexes in uh, Nazili and in Kayseri, uh, first uh, of the first two uh, industrial investments in Turkey. Uh, in 1932, a group of uh, Soviet experts came to Turkey to advise to repair to found a new industries where and what basically uh, and two was the textile industry was suitable uh, for the new republic and it should be established the first uh, factories would be established in Kayseri and in Aydın Nazilli to begin with and the construction of the uh, complex in Kayseri began uh, advice was given by the Soviets as well as a big loan, financial credit to finance these um, complexes. And the architecture was also a Soviet group uh, led by Ivan Nikolaev, uh, who later uh, became the director of industrial architectural work the dean of the uh, School of Architecture in Moscow, which is known as Marki today. Uh, there is a consortium formed for this purpose, for the design of the project, and it is called uh, Turkstroy, uh, written uh, on the screen. What you see on the right uh, is a portrait of Mustafa Kemal turning a big machine upwards this is in one of the buildings uh, in the complex and he is moving towards the west uh, and uh, it is 
uh, well, it is known that it is not written anywhere, but uh, in many it is known that this was a present uh, from the Soviets uh, to the factory. So they sculpture. Uh, okay, if we look at uh, Kayseri, 1940s, just after the complex uh, has been completed. Um, we are looking north. Okay, it says the connection is unstable. I hope you can hear me. Uh, coming out of the chimneys, this is the center of Kayseri where the citadel and several um, medieval buildings are. This is of the railroad and the railway station here. So this was uh, this edge of the city then. Not anymore today, of course. The city grew, uh, the settlement area grew quite a lot. And we were looking in this direction. This is the main road. Uh, this is the railroad. This is the factory. This is the airplane factory established by the Germans in the 90s of the um, political uh, problems between the Americans and the Germans, basically. And Turkey was Americanized, as you know. Uh, it was established by Junkers, the German uh, steel magnet, which still works uh, today. Okay, this is the um, plan of the complex, one of the earlier plans. We are again looking, uh, uh, not the north actually, no, We're looking towards the west. Uh, this is the railroad line, which is one of the edges of the factory. And this is the main road, which is the other uh, side. And in between these, we have this grid plan of uh, various functions. So sports and recruit administration, production, uh, houses in service housing, more recreation green areas, storage facilities that are related with the railroad. So um, on the railway and then they are when uh, the productions are made, industrial products are made. Um, side comes to the power plant, which was uh, filled with uh, plants in Kayseri, actually, and supplied to the rest for some time, and then just uh, but then it became obsolete, of course, later on. Uh, the big building is the factory building, which is about 35,000 square meters. It's huge. Uh, we will be looking at the buildings over here, the warehouses uh, and the workshop. Uh, and uh, staff housing and more staff housing for, well, laborers uh, housing, let's say. Um, on the other side of the main road, recreational areas over here and the administration block. Uh, in the Okay, this is a drawing from the uh, Soviet project uh, showing the, the is the factory again and these are the um, warehouses and workshop and the power uh, plant on the side. Um, 35. Uh, there are several articles in La Turki Kemalist which was a sort of propaganda journal achievements of the Republic and uh, included special pieces on new. Uh, what you see here below are the 
uh, so-called machine holes, uh, uh, which are the production places, uh, big, huge building. Okay, these are some drawings uh, and uh, pictures of the power plant. We will come back. Architecturally interesting building, let me say, in the campus. It is designed um, more in so, uh, the Soviet uh, modernist uh, tradition, which was known as, or the style rather. Uh, but the other buildings, and even this one, are not so constructed fragmented uh, cubism-like architectural style, let me say, but we have more uh, monumental, facimental um, proportions uh, in the campus, so it's sort of more uh, belongs to the second sometimes called classical or monumental modernism. The style was more like that. And the change in the style, uh, USSR was just about at the same time in the 1930s, with Stalin coming to power, uh, all sorts of avant-garde and sort of considered decadent uh, and modernism uh, acquired this more classical uh, and monumental uh, appearance. Um, Okay, a samples before the uh, restoration from the production building. Thousand square meters. These are the housing um, projects. Uh, separate uh, housing group for the administrative staff. Then there are a series of uh, houses for the labor master workers and single laborers. Uh, this was at the time uh, these rooms, a series of rooms like a hostel for uh, laborers without families uh, are seen almost in all uh, of these uh, early industrial complexes also in Europe in many places. We have examples of them for instance in Zonguldak uh, in the coal mines where safe are the one here is not like this anymore unfortunately in Kaiser it became a cultural uh, um, center for the municipality and its interior completely changed okay coming back to the campus um, 2011 and uh, Sumer Campus, uh, the former uh, Sumer Bank Textile Factory for Education. Formerly, uh, it belonged to RGS University for a while, but they did not uh, make good use, only partially used, and in a very bad and dilapidated state. There was a lot of vandalism that gave up on it and let the new university have uh, the campus, which was a great chance uh, for the university, basically. <clears throat> At the time, we didn't have any students. Um, 2013 was the first year uh, that students came to the university, and so Um, the first of these was to use part of the big production plant uh, for the purpose of education. Turn this uh, staff uh, housing into a space uh, for the students. To we had this big administration building over here uh, constructed. Oh no, sorry, over here. Uh, constructed into that and then uh, we started working on the restoration of the other buildings and 
housing, which was also transformed into dormitories on the other side. Uh, so there are, uh, this master plan also belongs uh, to us, Burakas Iskender, I and uh, Özlem Kevseroğlu. Uh, um, uh, so the housing area, sports area, the museum area is segregated from the rest of the was uh, established for Abdullah Gül uh, in this um, in this zone. It is not controlled by the university anymore, and it was a different project, so it did not connect very well with the rest of our landscaping because it has a different uh, with a different landscape project, unfortunately. Most of the area is for education and research and further student housing over here one year later, as I said. Okay, this line, which we will come to in a moment, is a thing we proposed. Uh, it was called the living uh, platform. It was a combination of plants, uh, walkways, benches, all of the campus uh, together. That was the idea. So something like this um, in idea. So cycling roads and so on, but uh, this has not been completed, uh, unfortunately. Uh, okay, in 12, Emre Aralat Architects in Istanbul, EAA, um, began a project for the master plan of the campus, but uh, that was later changed into what you have just seen. Uh, but according to Arulat's uh, design, a building was placed uh, over here. thought that a new building would be much uh, quicker to produce. Unfortunately, it did not prove to be the case. Uh, the director was promised to have the building in three months, and it was about 15 months later that uh, we could move in. A steel thing, it's quite impossible. This was mostly an administrative building with offices, but because of the uh, students had new students, we had to transform some of it into classrooms uh, and other uh, small social recreational areas, uh, at least temporarily. Um, this is the, over here, a series of warehouses were built in the 1970s, and this uh, new encompasses this building and uh, covers it completely, and becomes quite a taller and larger building. This is a, a photograph from the interior. This is the student uh, commons room and. Winter winters are quite harsh, so we need quite a bit of indoor space uh, that could be heated for use in the winter, so they cannot really use the outside so much uh, during the cold days. So we have all these interior uh, workspaces. The student housing dormitories. These buildings have not been changed at all. This is in the Turkish legislation, we have something called simple repairs. So that, that's what has been and painting the buildings and that sort of thing without changing anything about them. It's a project. Um, yes. And the other side of the road, and here a similar application uh, was made to the houses come into livable state. They had been, well, most of the campus had been abandoned for more than 12 years, and, are, and listing of this complex was also a problem. Uh, we also tackled that problem uh, with Dokomomo, the uh, the modern movement it's an NGO working on um, <clears throat> modern buildings uh, and in 
uh, and then later in 2007, uh, we managed to carry out the listing of buildings um, through the legislative system in Turkey, and that's how basically this area had been saved, and actually with the buildings after 10 years. Uh, one other thing in this uh, door canteen, uh, which was uh, created by the combination of uh, two depot buildings with a glazed uh, glass um, structure. There was no, again, closed social space in this area. It was all just uh, grass and trees. We needed to create something where the students could eat and work and uh, that sort of thing, in addition to their houses, of course. The building we ended up with. Uh, okay. Uh, and the dormitory, where the students uh, stay four by four in houses of students uh, has a bathroom, a washing machine, a kitchen. Uh, they share the houses but they live very comfortably compared to the other state uh, universities in Turkey. We had very few students to begin with in the first uh, three or four years but it's not so comfortable. Although we have more buildings it is not enough. The next building I will be talking about is the warehouse just opposite Emre Aralat's uh, project, which is called the Büyük Ambar, or the Great Warehouse, or just the Warehouse. Um, this was an empty building uh, to begin with, only divided into four by these uh, big walls. Um, Yes, and this was, uh, the proposal was to use this for education, so uh, professors' offices and classrooms, and also architecture studios, because there was no uh, other space uh, for the architecture studios. We require larger uh, spaces for the projects, uh, design projects, basically. So this is how I uh, left uh, by itself for almost 15 years, since 1999 to about nine. State, uh, there was a lot of vandalism. Um, the windows were broken, the doors were pulled out. The roof was totally destroyed, the roof cladding. There was water everywhere, uh, you know, it was crazy bad and uh, many machines from the production plant were, uh, were actually stored in this building so there was a lot of moving and cleaning to be done when we began to project uh, yes that's also some walls were taken down we had all this uh, brick uh, rubble lying around uh, okay, this is the uh, concept behind the project. So as I said, this is uh, almost completely empty except for uh, three big dividing walls. And what we decided to, to do was to create a box in a box uh, for this build. So the studios are over here. There are series of classrooms and offices on top of them. And here, the cafeteria, which was moved to here in the 1970s, that was the uh, uh, workers' lunchroom, actually. And we decided to keep this uh, as the cafeteria and cafe again. So in plans, it looks like this. Classrooms at the ground floor and offices with on the upper floor. And these are the architecture spaces I told you about. And this is the lunchroom at the end. Okay, 
building, so it was cleaned all the way to its uh, structural system. And then you uh, beams and steel columns uh, was erected in the building. Uh, 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 in some areas, the foundations were had to be done again where the steel boxes would be sitting. We had to the windows were cleaned and repainted. Uh, some of the elements were missing, like this door, which we had to reproduce them from old photographs, measurements we have taken at the site. Uh, there were parts of the building wall which were destroyed completely, so we use of these areas uh, to bring in more light uh, into the building, rather than uh, as you see here, we decide to do a series of uh, glazed walls, which I think added a nice touch, which means uh, quite a bit more light inside the building. These are again com students' comments or the facade, which was lost and turned into a uh, transparent facade. Uh, building. Yes, uh, the only thing we could not complete was the railroad uh, in this axis. We are still waiting to put the uh, uh, rails back uh, into the garden basically to keep this uh, idea. Okay, some pictures from the completed building. The doors were all repaired and the missing ones were uh, reproduced from the original ones. Uh, there, were, there were doors or windows in the building actually because it's a warehouse and what they stored here was cotton and woven cotton cloth. So it didn't matter if it froze or if it was uh, too hot, the only thing they cared about was fire basically. So environment we had to add these glass doors uh, inside the original uh, steel doors you see here okay and these are the classrooms on the ground floor and the uh, offices on the upper floor all with glazed facades some areas have this uh, what we call a uh, cortan from french it's a rusty iron quite a bit used in restoration, especially when uh, you don't want to commit to some sort of uh, unknown material that you don't want to pretend that you are reproducing something, saying that this is something basically from the 21st century. So that's uh, how it came to be. Otherwise, um, yeah, the only other material is timbered, uh, uh, areas in addition to the glass, but otherwise it's the building itself. The structure was completely cleaned and left uh, as it was without touching. We only added these electricity and ventilation systems, of course. And we only, we also, I have to admit, we also changed the color of the floor, uh, which was a cement color, of course, without any cladding. But that was uh, the movement of many people. So we put a uh, epoxy flooring, a very um, dark blue, which goes well. Uh, with the, it fits the original uh, fire uh, system in the building, which you see some examples here. Not like our modern sprinkler systems, you have to open the tap uh, somewhere in the building when there is a fire. They do not, not extracting water by themselves. But otherwise, it's the same idea, and we left them in place. They are not, of course, working anymore. Uh, they are too old and rust. Uh, they remain as uh, a part of the building. 
we had so sitting around and doing other things like, um, in addition to climbing up and down this room which is also a box in this very big box uh, and this is the upper level where the professor's offices are they're also mostly glazed walls and there is an open gallery uh, a walkway uh, that provides connection um, and access uh, yes they look like this and this is from the lunch room the one but uh, well it did not happen because the furniture uh, that we chose is not there yet so it is quite a bit less colorful than this but and these are the classrooms uh, these are the largest uh, classrooms uh, this was an area where we had to change the foundation so we played around a bit with the levels and created a um, stepped uh, classroom students basically our university is very small uh, well at least at the beginning it was so but now uh, it requires larger spaces of course but for the first four or five years these spaces were more than enough uh, for the uh, education uh, the next the uh, bar is the Itfaye or fire station. Uh, this was also the uh, repair shop for uh, motor vehicles um, in the um, in the factory. In addition to being the fire station where the fire trucks were, and here we kept the original idea of uh, having these garage doors on one side and added windows which are not visible uh, from the outside on the inside of these so that we could control the climate this is the interior of the space so this was one big garage space basically and that uh, he has a maintenance uh, pool as they call it um, so you walk down to um, check the uh, vehicle we also kept these um, areas and glazed over them uh, to remind us that this was actually a garage and maintenance and building uh, to start with it is a lunch room right now it was supposed to for lunch right now so uh anyway it did not uh, live up to its uh, potentials i would say but space uh, is all right and this is a night view uh this tower we added uh building it was not here there was no tower but we thought we needed a defining element in the campus this this street here is the main uh, pedestrian access of the whole complex and we thought we required the point um, uh, something to guide the people to find their way basically so we had needed uh, some architectural element that's why we created this uh, high point over he here but otherwise uh, its function is actually is about service so it contains coolers and heaters and uh, wet spaces toilets etc it's also covered in this material uh, i said i told you about it's called cortan it's a uh, pre rusted iron um, cladding basically and the rust is stable uh, it doesn't uh, keep eating steel it just remains like that forever uh, next to this building is the offices and which is rumored uh, rumored to be the um what do you call it the um the first uh, 
construction management office of this complex established in 1932 built uh, just when they were starting but this is not confirmed and documented unfortunately this is just hearsay but it's possible and there's a small house in front of it we also repaired this and kept this uh, did not remove it so as you see the colors are always very subtle this color of the windows we found in another building but but applied it very well with this period so the is sort of gray or light blue was the preferred uh, color of the windows usually in the 1920s and 30s in modern buildings uh, and uh, we use that as well okay this is from the interior and coming to the power plant uh, come of the interesting building actually in the campus and uh, Burak and I uh, we did not actually to do this one which is which I'm still sorry about I would have loved to do this uh, buildings restoration project but it was uh, because of the Abdullah Gül Museum idea they wanted to uh, give the project to Emre Arolat again which one of the favorite ar uh, architects of the of Abdullah Gül's wife basically at the period he was getting all the commissions the this is a drink uh, from Moscow, from the archive, uh, one of the uh, drawings of the building before its construction, so architectural drawings. This is in about 1935 or 36, one of the first photographs of the building. So it did not change uh, very much, actually. They kept the outside appearance as it was. They of course repaired all deteriorated surfaces and materials. Uh, yes, this is also architectural uh, project for this side. So as you see, it did not uh, change very much its characteristics on the outside. There are more changes on the inside, but I'm not going to go into them. And the, the museums, uh, well, the function is also to go into discussing and criticizing that. But the interior spaces, they kept uh, the so-called original colors. But as you see, these colors are all from different periods. One side from the 1970s, these probably from 40s, 50s. This lighter green perhaps from the 1930s, similar to the original color, but they did not bother to sort of unify the interior as such. There were uh, later additions uh, to the campus. Well, this is not a restoration project, but a new building designed by Han Tumartekin and Mimar Lars, uh, his office. And this is covered in aluminum. Well, because of the idea of the factory has this uh, strange roof and it's a huge building. Uh, they chose its location checking for the trees because the campus has very many monumental trees became become almost a forest. Uh, and to, cost, to be able to construct find some empty space or carry the trees some uh, place and in this case the trees were carried to another basically okay it's quite a simple uh, building okay some pictures from the interior so the campus by this time has become a combination of uh, some of the uh, best and most well known architects in to Martekin, which is an uh, important uh, collection, basically, the old contemporary architecture, also, we could say. And coming to the last part of my talk, um, these are the 
project completed, so I'm going to show you a little bit about these uh, half done is to the campus it's on the main street opposite the railroad uh, it's these are stone buildings uh, with some uh, uh, reinforced concrete uh, systems added to it so uh, simple uh, single story buildings basically and they they, uh, the university wants to use this as the visitor center and the welcome facilities and some uh, commercial spaces. Three parts, so one, uh, two, and three. Two of them L-shaped vehicular entrances. This is the main entrance with the colonnade. And here is the pedestrian entrance. No vehicular access there um, okay the first building on the right uh, this l-shaped thing becomes the visitor center and offices with the addition of a new uh, section here uh, which is going to include an exhibition about the campus um, okay i forgot i Thing to put the next one. The next one, we saw an L shaped building, the symmetrical to this one, is not changed at all. There's a series of corridors and offices in this one, and it's going to remain like that without any changes. And the third part, which is the straight building here, becomes the market, uh, the pedestrian entrance, and a big cafe for the students. And it's going to acquire again a new addition, this time a concrete box. Uh, 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 new steel structure. Something like this. Uh, these are renders of the interior. So we're keeping the facade here, but adding the steel it becomes like a colonnade the original facade um, this is the pedestrian access uh, from the main road and this is the cafe the concrete and glass box that's going to be added on this side it will be nice if ever completed <coughs> but of course the university ran out of money and the must buildings are the classrooms and of Pieces and things like that, uh, which are more important to complete. Um, this is the second project, which was also left. First, in ways less important with the completion of the Abdullah Gül Museum. Nobody thinks that we need another museum, but uh, we decided that it was necessary to include a building about the complex itself uh, in this complex so that there could be a visitor center, perhaps uh, an archive of the Smarbank material, which is kept in bits and pieces in private individuals' houses at, the, at this time. And the museum about industry uh, in the early years of the Republic, perhaps. Um, this is called the maintenance workshop, Bakım uh, Onarım Atölyesi able to maintain and repair all the uh, machinery in the main production plant bed. So all the machines uh, in the production plant and equipment to reproduce any missing bit from, uh, from basic materials and um, correct them. Um, and then place them back where they belong basically so it this becomes a sort of sustainable uh, machinery system you don't wait for missing parts you don't order them from abroad you make them uh, yourself uh, okay this was the uh, our idea for this building graduate students uh, bahar Öztimur. Uh, 
uh, this became her uh, her graduate thesis project uh, as well. So at the entrance to the museum over here, and then there are other facilities. Uh, at the time, they wanted a TV studio because there are a lot of promotion movie promotion films being made. So this is designed as a, a production studio in the back. Uh, these are the wet spaces. Uh, there are some offices and some video rooms and other things uh, in these smaller spaces. Uh, the original plan layout of the building at all. It remains as it is. We are just playing around with the functions of the room rooms transform into other uh, possible functions okay this is these two this one and this one a hall of machines and this is the iron foundry where there are uh, i ovens for melt smelting iron and pouring it basically uh, yeah Boundary space. Okay, this is an uh, this is the view from the top. Uh, basically, this is the entrance side, and this is are the TV studios side uh, at the other end. Uh, some of our former students worked on these renders and I think they like the view more at night because of these many windows. So there's light in the building and a dark sky. That's why they're all from this is the interior space, the entrance, the main hall of machines, which will be the main space of the museum. There are many instruments uh, in this hall, so it's a kind of like archaeology. We have to clean those machines, repair them, and also explain what they do, of course. Uh, that will be a process of learning, so we don't know. And there will be panels and other exhibition elements integrated into this. And the... Uh, uh, pic uh, the sculpture of Mustafa Kemal turning the uh, cog is also in the space and it will remain there. It has a very interesting floor, so it's made of uh, wooden blocks, not like uh, wooden parquet or uh, cladding. These are thick blocks and not polished rough blocks. So, or it's very interesting. We thought it's pro. Uh, we decided that it is probably against the it which keeps shaking the floor probably and perhaps breaks the concrete after a while if it's uh, poured cement on the floor and it also probably absorbs the oil leaking from the machine so that you don't get. Uh, patches of oil floor it's all absorbed uh, by these wooden elements it's well it's the first time i saw a floor like that actually i i have to admit so we were surprised yes this is a sculpture still in situ we are sort of scared of uh, taking it down anyway because it's uh, made of the cast uh, lime uh, sorry, plaster mixture basically. It's painted to look like uh, steel or metal or bronze, but it's not. Uh, it's just uh, gypsum plaster basically, and it's if it is probably going to break if we move it. Examples from some of the machines. There are really interesting homemade designs in most of these spaces. Actually, it's a very interesting sort of almost like archaeological work discovering uh, things here and there trying to understand the spaces uh, and so on couldn't find any more i don't know what we have done 
with them, unfortunately. And we thought that and, and uh, remains of the uh, iron and steel production in the space is that we will keep it on the floor as it is. It's sort of need, not needed, but ankle deep uh, sand and um, uh, and iron uh, ore basically. So we decide to keep that on the floor and put perhaps a glass uh, glazed flooring on top of it to show it off and then use this as a sort of uh, multi-purpose space for as conference hall, movie theater and exhibition space. Okay, this is it, I think. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, you can contact me with email if you want. You can also find me and other publications about this building if you put my name into Academia or ResearchGate or uh, search engines like that, you can uh, find publications as well if you'd like to read about them. Great, thank okay. you. Thank you very much. Oh, if you want. Uh, Nilufar, I'm sure there are some questions. I mean, this is really fascinating. Sure, um, I have a 10 minute from 1935. That's my other <laughs> thing. Um, so I, ha I have a question. Let's go to I questions, questions. I'll, but I will ask uh, you uh, uh, now. Um, so this is a really fascinating um, way of bringing a new layer of uh, sort of uh, function and identity to to the old identity of the um of the building and and keeping the old identity sort of layered in the um structure of the building um so this this is very fascinating and i'm particularly interested um in the image of ataturk um have you or has anyone thought about doing a 3d scan of it and then a 3d replica of it um especially in this time period you can copy create 3d copies of of uh sculptures of of uh, or or things like that fairly easily and you said how fragile it is it might break but if you have if you make a copy of it it might help we have documented it but there's scanner in the university as well which we acquired recently so it is actually possible we did not think about that at the time but while the documenting the building uh, in detail we also documented the sculpture of course as i said it's a gypsum cast not very strong um, has these reinforcements the timber elements behind it i had a picture from behind um, so I don't think we can take it off there. So the idea is to keep it in situ during a sort of reinforced uh, sort of uh, scaffolding around it to keep it safe. But we, because the knee is broken somehow uh, with a sculptor basically who culture and museums um, have uh, staff of this type usually okay um here's Restore a store the sculpture eventually well i hope i hope they make a copy of it as well because it's fairly easy to make a copy of it with a 3d scanner um anyway it's a very powerful image uh that I know if they made um, little souvenirs, souvenir, people might want to get the, them. Yeah. No. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, um, here's a question. Sort of dangerous political show it to everyone. Some of my listeners here actually have seen it, but like you, Elif. sort of our secret <laughs> um here's a question according to the law you mentioned were you able to rewire rewire the student housing 
Um, what about updating plumbing? Done without taking the walls and the floors down completely. So yes, we also renovated the kitchens and the bathrooms state and quite unusable so uh, this uh, simple repair um, uh, lets you do that too so these were uh, listed buildings but uh, as uh, how like Hagia Sophia the listing type is a bit different and uh, simple repairs are possible which includes renovation rooms and painting the walls and as I said repairing the windows of course rewiring and plumbing innovations that do not change the original characteristics and especially the exterior of the building hmm. um, um, there is a central library right now yeah I have read should I Our faculty libraries I think you did not mention this yes you're right um, there is a library in the thing that I showed in the beginning uh, designed by Emre Arolat uh, there's a big library space there uh, which remains as a central library for now actually Abdullah University has another campus and another project uh, designed by Alishan Chur uh, however, there has been no money for this other campus and because it's sort of a very suburban campus quite outside the center, nobody wants to go there, of course. Uh, so it has been sort of uh, delayed. The central library uh, was supposed to be there. It was going to be a very big uh, library structure, but if it will ever be built we'll see uh, we have uh, a smaller library campus right now about 6,000 I think I was also the library commission mostly uh, online resources as you know right more even not even the librarians everybody wants online resources so mostly online resources like they don't want to buy them all from the web and so on so it's limited to uh, sort of the most necessary books about six to ten thousand uh, books right now not much limit maybe there is more here in Arit I don't know <laughs> maybe ever counted yeah, we have about fifteen thousand or so here and also some more in Istanbul so yeah um, any other questions so not a very online but we're highly specialized so we don't have everything um, yeah we don't have much either in terms of hard copies at the university I have to say everything almost everything is online hmm. Well, thank you very much, Jennifer. Any more? Thank you. Come. I'm going to leave the the group now. Okay. Thank you. Well, there are no other questions. All right. Thanks for joining. Good night. Thank you. Thank you very much. Of course, the, uh, there's another question. Are the buildings protected as National Republic cultural? As yes, the term in the legislation is cultural property. Uh, you can also list uh, or register uh, uh, entry and these are protected, listed and protected under uh, the uh, law on the uh, preservation of cultural property, basically. Uh, being renovated or restored doesn't change this fact, they are still listed. 
it's also uh, a historic site. Of course, historic is not a very good word for this is an urban or industrial uh, heritage site, but the only definition in, in our legislation right now is it remains a historic urban site on paper, <laughs> I have to say. Hmm. Well, I hope it acts as a model for a lot of other buildings like that. Um, it's really, I mean, it must feel... Well, that will be long. It must feel great to be in a building. I didn't have like time that. to talk about. Yeah, I didn't have time to talk about this since it would have been strong, but we have lost many industrial complexes in Turkey since this privatization occurred in the late 1990s. So we have only been able to preserve partially uh, some of the sites. Uh, Kayseri has been a bit luckier uh, in terms of the architectural attention it got, I think. Kubaba, <laughs> git. <laughs> yeah, for, for sure, for sure, down. There's another question. The wood block floor There's is interesting. Question. How is it cleaned and uh, what is the yearly upkeep? I have no idea because we have not seen this maintenance workshop in work. And they have poured cement over on top of these wooden blocks at some time. Uh, we don't know when, but underneath the wooden blocks still exist. We can see that. We are, we are not sure how the uh, upkeep and maintenance and cleaning worked in this case. When the project will be completed? Well, when there is money, this is a state university, so the as much as we could, but um, I don't have the slightest idea when there will be more money to uh, want to use our projects. Uh, they might also get other uh, restoration projects and get a reuse they can change the functions of the buildings we have proposed as well uh, so we are not sure about that for Kemal University <laughs> yeah there's not too much to tell about uh, the university right now but there's a lot of stories to tell about Antakya and Hatay of course Elif also has stories more more stories than I do about Antakya, I think. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll get back to Antakya shortly, hopefully. So, um, any other questions? A lot of teşekkürler, thank you. Well, thank you very much. Um, and I hope uh, you continue your work on, um, on buildings like that. I was hoping, um, wishful thinking that the Saracholo Mahallesi would also be turned into some sort of an educational institution. It would have been great, but unfortunately it's turning into something commercial. Um, but what can you do? Capitalism wins all the time. <laughs> Maybe yeah, not all the time. It's becoming a big at, 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 at shopping mall. Good, we see something positive. <laughs> so it's a good model, hopefully. Yeah, it's so All true, but it has still become a nice environment. So yes, I am happy for, uh, having me as your speaker today. It was an honor. And well, yes, Saracholu is something we have been uh, struggling with for the past couple of weeks uh, as Dokomomo, as experts in cultural heritage, as eco group. Uh, there are many people involved, many other NGOs as well, uh, but the project that has been, it has no social context, basically a sort of high-end shopping district is coming. So that's all we are getting in Ankara, unfortunately, from that project. If we are not able
All right. Thank you, everyone. And have a good night. And hope, hopefully we'll see you all on Monday on our open house event on Zoom in your living rooms, I suppose. Um, but make a, make a glass of wine or a glass of beer ready. So it'll be fun. Okay. Good night. Thank you, Nilufar. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining and listening. Thank you. Nice to see you.